Hi, I'm Zhe. Here we present differentiable rendering a survey. Rendering is a process of generating images of 3D scenes defined by geometry, materials, lighting, and camera properties. Making the rendering process differentiable has lots of advantages. First, it can help to optimize 3D scene parameters. Given those parameters, the renderer will generate output images like RGB, depth, or silhouette images. Then we can compute the objective function based on the rendering output and the target image. If the, if the render is differentiable, we can backpropagate the gradient to optimize the same parameters to minimize the objective function. This is useful to optimize camera pose, global illumination, materials, or 3D object shape. Also, it has lots of application in 3D self-supervision tasks like 3D object reconstruction, human or hand estimation, face reconstruction from image. Given the input image, we can design a lunar light work to reconstruct the scene, and then the render will generate the rendered image. Intuitively, the rendered image should be consistent with the input image, so we can design photo consistency loss and optimize the reconstruction network if the render is differentiable. In this paper, we will re review the following aspects of differentiable rendering. First, we review differentiable rendering's mechanism. This is important to understand which methods are suitable for addressing certain types of problems. Then, we will review the evaluation methodology. This is important to compare different differentiable rendering methods and help us to choose or develop lower differentiable rendering methods. Next, we review the application and usage of differentiable rendering. This can help us to use differentiable rendering in lower tasks. Finally, we review some libraries of differentiable rendering. This is useful to facilitate real-time applications or deploy differentiable rendering on embedded devices. Now we show some general backgrounds. Unlike 2D representation, objects can have very different representation in 3D forms, for example, the voxels, point clouds, mesh, or implicit surface. Different renders usually have their own implementations, but they usually include two steps. The first is to project object from 3D coordinate to camera image plane. This step is fully differentiable because it only involves matrix multiplication. The second step is rasterization. This step is to assign colors for discrete pixels in the image plane. This step is usually non-differentiable. In the rasterization step, we first assign a triangle to a target pixel. Then we compute the pixel color based on assigned triangle's color. Take this figure, for example. Say we want to rasterize this gray triangle. For pixel PJ, we consider its color when we're moving the x coordinate of vertices vi. When we move when we move x i from a to b, the color of PJ will suddenly transit from zero to the color of triangle, and unfortunately, that means the gradient is zero. Next, we present a, a formal problem setting. The input to render is a set of same parameters like shape, camera, materials, and lighting parameters. The output is a rendered image like RGB image or depth image. The rendering function takes those same parameters and generates the output image. The problem is to compute the gradient of the output image with respect to the input same parameters. Usually, the computation of the gradient can be approximated but it should be accurate enough to provide information to minimize the objective function. We then show differentiable rendering approach on different object representation. We first show the algorithm for mesh. There are two lines of method. The first is to use approximated gradients, like neural 3D mesh render and OpenDR. Take neural 3D mesh render, for example. If the color of a pigeon changes suddenly when we move the x coordinate of vertices vi, we can blur the image so that the change of pj is linear when they move the x coordinate of vertices vi. In this way, the gradient is constant between x0 and x1. 
the second fly, the second line of work is to use approximated rendering like soft rasterizer and a DIB render, etc. In these approaches, unlike standard rasterizer that sample the closest triangle and rasterize it to generate a rendered image, soft rasterizer compute a probability map for each triangle in the mesh. Its main idea is to set pixels closer to the triangle edge or within the triangle to have a higher probability. Then it aggregates all the probability maps based on the depths of those triangles. Next, we show the rendering for voxel. It usually follows the a rematching pipeline. The related works are perspective transformer network, differentiable ray consistency, neural volumes, or SDFDF. To be concise, it first casts the rays and collects the voxels that are located along the ray. Then it computes activations on those voxels and the compute and the composed activations along the ray. Then we show the rendering for point clouds. It is similar to the rendering of mesh. It first transforms the 3D point from what coordinate to the screen space coordinates. Then it computes inference of 3D points on target pixels cardinal. Finally, it aggregates those pit points based on the inference and the z-values of the 3D points. Finally, we show the rendering for implicit surface. This is similar to the rendering of voxel. It first sample points are the rays. However, this step is more challenging because implicit surface has an infinite resolution. Then it checks the intersection points. How to sample the points more efficient is crucial for implicit surface-based rendering. A classic approach is to use sphere tracing. That will present evaluation metrics in differentiable rendering. An intuitive approach is to use direct gradient evaluation. However, it lacks a common benchmark, and some people are focusing on approximated gradients. So their gradient is not designed to be accurate but are useful for solving the downstream task. Some other papers use gradient visualization and analyze the convergence efficiency. Some papers also evaluate and optimize the same parameters. However, lacking a benchmark is still a problem. Many recent papers deploy their differentiable render to 3D reconstruction tasks and evaluate the 3D reconstruction accuracy. Computation time is also an important evaluation matrix. Next, we show the applications of differentiable rendering on 3D object reconstruction. Given the input image, we design a reconstruction network to reconstruct the 3D model and the camera parameters if it was not given. Then we use the differentiable render to generate the render image. We then compute the photo consistency loss between the input image and the render image or our, or our multi view image pairs. Then we optimize the 3D reconstruction network to, to minimize this photo consistency loss. Next, we show some common libraries for differentiable rendering. We listed the implementation details, uh, supported the primitives. Uh, algorithm and the rendering methods, etc., for TensorFlow graphics, Kaolin, PyTorch 3D, and Mitsuba 2. Finally, we show some open issues in differentiable rendering. The first issue is that the render model is usually not complicated enough compared to lateral image generation, so it is difficult to produce photorealistic image. Another promising direction is differentiable rendering of videos. This requires integration of a physical simulator. And incorporating learning-based methods into a differentiable rendering is also worth considering, because if we learn a real image, we can have the potential to generate more realistic rendering. Thanks for listening.